we need to talk about power. The kinds of power relations, systems and structures that shape everything about our world and our diverse experiences of it. Pablo reclining with sunglasses on. Okay, yeah, yeah, whatever, mate. So what? Here's what. We're talking about power that perpetuates social injustices. It unfairly advantages some people and unfairly disadvantages other people, especially within and partly because of formal education systems like higher education. But talking's not enough. We need to do. We need to talk the talk and walk the walk. We need to teach and learn how to critique, challenge and change power structures. This is where my power-centered pedagogy comes in. Introducing Powergogy. Welcome to my Reflections on Power, Teaching and National Teaching Fellowship Award. Yeah, it's Pablo. My name's Dr. Pablo Dolby and I'm the Learning Enhancement Tutor for Inclusive Education at the University of East Anglia. That's UEA for short. If you want to learn more about me, including a sensory description of what I look like, there's a link in this video's description on YouTube to a one minute video bio or intro where I cover this. I'm joined today by AI Al, Introduce yourself, Al. Hi, I'm Al, and I provide audio description using artificial intelligence so people can understand important things that happen visually. Join us as we wander around the beautiful UEA campus, reflecting on what my 2024 National Teaching Fellowship Award, or NTF, means for my work. Well, first of all, I'm hoping it doesn't mean I get loads more work to do. Only joking, kind of. <laughs> Yeah. Pablo laughs nervously. But first, to be inclusive, here's a brief outline of the path we're going to take in this short video. One, critical reflections on my NTF award and awards more generally. Two, an overview of my Powergogy framework. And three, an example of an activity from the Powergogy framework and its impact. The video is divided into those sections or chapters, so you can use the timeline to skip to sections if you want. Stay with us till the end and I'll finish with a special challenge for you. Section one, reflections on my National Teaching Fellowship Award. I'm really happy to win the NTF Award for Teaching Excellence. It's given me a real boost of energy, satisfaction, and confidence. We see Pablo's reflection in the lake water. And in the spirit of critical reflection within higher education, I'm also gonna reflect critically on awards. I'm talking about awards in general across society, but let's focus on the higher education context because I'm acutely aware that countless people deserve to win awards and generally greater respect and recognition, but don't. So here are some critical questions for us to reflect on. You could pause the video or just let these linger in your mind. Question one, how, if at all, do awards contribute to inequalities and inequities? Question two, to what extent do awards function as substitutes or proxies for more systematic forms of recognition and incentivization, like paying conditions? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the YouTube comments thread for this video. I don't know all the answers to those questions, but I know that awards have a relationship with systems and structures in higher education and society, and these systems and structures produce inequities. All these processes have one crucial thing in common, power. Section two, my power gogi framework. So if we want to address these problems and change them, we have to address power. Power gogi is my power centered pedagogy. Pedagogy technically means teaching children, but it's often used more broadly to refer to approaches to teaching and learning. The name power gogi combines the word power with pedagogy. Basically, it's an approach that puts attention to power at the center of teaching and learning. After all, if we want to transform power structures, we need to learn how to do it. You can learn more details about Powergogy in my Overview of Powergogy webpage. There's a link in the YouTube description below. Powergogy is applicable and adaptable to different contexts, and you'll find my Powergogy framework as a useful guide. The framework has six dimensions which link together big picture ideas about the higher purpose of higher education with practical activities that help learners develop power literacies as agents of social change. Here's an example of one activity from the Power Gogi framework and the impact it's had. Section three, Power Gogi example and impact. We see Pablo pretending to be a student being taught by a teacher sitting on a stage. One example of Power Gogi in action 
is my revolving roles model. He then switches places with the teacher and sits on the stage. This reverses conventional teacher-student roles, subverting power dynamics, and empowers students to co-design and lead their own learning experiences. Students take centre stage. Students can work alone or in groups, each with a different role to play in facilitating the learning experience for everyone. Students revolve roles over time. So everyone gets a chance to develop different skills and competencies. You can find out more about revolving roles in my short video for Times Higher Education. There's a link to that in this video's YouTube description. My revolving roles model has been successfully implemented in universities across the UK. Revolving roles has helped countless students enhance their skills and competencies in various areas, including critical thinking and doing, democratic decision making, collaborative communication and creative problem solving. Crucially, it's also helped students develop as change makers who feel they can make a positive impact on others in higher education and in society. All right, that's it. But let me leave you with a challenge. How might you implement Powagogy in your context? Please leave your thoughts, ideas and feedback in the YouTube comment section. Thanks for watching and let's make learning fair for all.